Hey everyone, this is Tim from SmartHomeMastery.com and in uh, today's video I wanted to show you how I built my home theater stage on the second floor of my house. So uh, we'll get started. Before, before we get started, um, please uh, subscribe and uh, at the end of the video if you found this helpful, please uh, click the like button. I'm going to be doing lots more videos, uh, keep doing videos on home theater, home automation, renewable energy, um, home networking, those types of things. So if, if that's something that you like, uh, please subscribe and make sure you click the notification bell so you find out whenever I post a new video. So um, one of the complexities of building a home theater on a second floor is the is the sound isolation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you'll find in uh, most home theaters that are built in basements, uh, the theater actually ends up getting filled with sand. And the theory there is that the mass of all that sand in the stage helps, um, you know, isolate the uh, sound waves from being transmitted um, into the into the structure of the house. So when you're on a second floor, obviously, you um, you don't have a lot of good options for adding, you know, literally tons of weight of sand into your stage. So I'm going to walk through what I did. Um, I mean, it actually ended up getting really good results um, from this, this setup. So I'll walk through each step of how I did this. Um, I can, I can play, I can be in my home theater with the, you know, near, near reference level, uh, probably reference level volume and um, nobody in the rest of the house even knows um, even knows that I'm up here so a little background um, my theater is over the top of my garage and the garage and the theater share one wall with the house so um, the sound isolation I have for the theater is um, I didn't go crazy it's like no isolation clips none of that kind of stuff uh, no green glue, no double drywall. I did um, do a layer of half inch OSB on the walls, and then I did um, a layer of half inch drywall. And the, the OSB, the seams were cocked. Um, I did cock the seams between on the wall, only on the wall that was shared with the house, um, and then the half inch uh, drywall. That was pretty much it for sound uh, isolation um, from the um, rest of the house. So. Um, you know, it, it, I didn't go crazy with that. And so I, and like I said, I got pretty good results. So I think if, uh, if you follow kind of what I do here, um, I, there's no reason you shouldn't have similar results. So what I started off with, um, uh, is some three quarter inch, uh, rubber matting. And this is the same stuff. Um, I picked this up at tractor supply. Um, and, uh, this is like the stall mat stuff. So it's, it's really heavy. I think each of these is like 50 pounds or something. Um, so, you know, you're going to probably want help with that, but there, uh, you just go to, um, tractor supply, Home Depot might have them too. I'm not sure, but I'll ha I have links. I'll have a link to the blog I wrote about this. Um, and it, that has links to all this, all this stuff that you need for this. So, um, uh, check that out in the, in the description of this video. So yeah, I started off a uh, layer of three quarter inch rubber matting, and you can see this is just laid in between the stage walls. Um, this, this is my stage. You can see the, uh, I have four recessed can lights, um, for lighting up the front of the screen. And then there is actually an, an outlet that's in the ceiling in the back there. And that's for the backstage lighting. I, I can show you in another video. So this, the beginning is just, uh, yeah, just putting the rubber mat down. And then, uh, next step was building the stage itself. So I used uh, two by, I think these are two by tens, um, and just did regular, you know, uh, 16 on center framing, um, and just basically built a big rectangle. Uh, what you what you want to do is to not attach this to the walls. So this this stage actually is floating. Um, it does not get attached to either the back wall or the side walls. Um, uh, you'll see in later videos. Um, uh, the gaps the gaps that are in there but don't attach this to the wall so just build this standard framing you can see here um, I just built uh, two rectangular boxes and um, and then I what I did is I built uh, two smaller boxes on either end and then just did a 45 degree um, between that box and the um, 
uh, the original rectangular boxes. So the, you know, and this is all personal preference, uh, how wide you want to make this, um, how, how you want to make your step. But, um, mine is roughly, I think about as wide as my screen. So I think this comes out to be about 140 inches across. I have 140 inch wide, uh, a screen, uh, 235 to one screen. Uh, so I, I made this, I think, so it was roughly, uh, the width of the screen. So if you take and put two by fours down here, it makes a really nice uh, step uh, for your for your stage. Um, make this gives it a really um, really cool look um, to look like a real stage. Uh, again, just all simple framing. You can see I think I even used leftover uh, two by tens and some of this because they're kind of dirty. Um, and then what you want to do is is you don't have to fill it, but you want to put um, fiberglass insulation in there. And that's that's just that's to prevent you, you don't want your stage to become a you know an amplification for the base. So um, fill that space up. Um, I would say at least three quarter inches full. Um, you know down here you can see I filled this up. I think I just had leftover insulation um, like R nineteen possibly, um, which is why it didn't fill up the two by ten. Um, but um, that should be fine. You don't you don't have to fill it all the way up. You can see here that the rubber mat actually sticks out beyond that, and we'll take care of that um, here in the next step, I think, or this step, um, one of the steps uh, later. So yeah, just regular um, 16 on center framing, uh, really simple stuff for both of this. Uh, I just use 45s to keep the angles simple. Um, nothing, nothing too complicated there. Another shot you can see, so that, you know, again, just two rectangular boxes, and then the two by four frame uh, in between uh, to build the the little step for the stage. So then I took and uh, I, just, I uh, covered it with uh, three quarter inch uh, sub flooring. So the rest of my house uh, is Advantech. This is actually isn't Advantech. Um, it, yeah, I don't think you need to spend that much money on Advantech uh, to for for this. So you can see here um, I got a, a cock on here. So it's I just use sub floor adhesive and then drywall screws um, and just cut the frame out, uh, cut the plywood out to fit the frame, both the step and the, and the regular stage. And again, don't, um, you can see, you kind of see, there's like a gap along this whole thing. None of this is actually attached to any of the walls. It's just sitting on top of the rubber frame here. Um, it's just another picture again, the same thing. Plywood on top of the, everything just cut flush. Uh, the plywood just cut flush with the uh, stage framing. So to um, trim this out, I used uh, um, three quarter inch flooring, the bull nose for three quarter inch flooring. Uh, so this is just standard bull nose. I got it at um, Home Depot, I believe. Uh, the problem, I, I wouldn't have went with hardwood, but I couldn't find anything that wasn't hardwood. The, the only stuff they had was the hardwood version. So, the, you know, you, if you can find it, that's not hardwood, or you could make your own if you want to. Um, you could, uh, you could cut your own in with a router, just round the edges over. I just went and bought actual bull nose and, uh, ran it, um, just along that, uh, top edge of the stage. And then you'll see later, I put it also down at the step, but I get, I mean, you'll look here. I think this was pretty tight here, but, um, I think I cut that off later, but that, that you don't want that you, you don't want that touching the wall either. And I just used, um, I used the, uh, subfloor adhesive and then I, um, I used uh, my nail gun sitting. So, that's all I, that's how I attached it. And then uh, you can see some wood filler um, filled in the holes because uh, I was going to, I'm going to paint mine. So if you, it, you know, if you want to have this and stain it, um, you can certainly do that too. Um, you'll want to be a little more precise than I was on, my, on your cuts and everything. But um, I just, I knew I was going to paint mine. So I just, uh, you know, tried to fill in everything I could with um, wood filler where, where the angles weren't exact. And then, uh, sanded everything down. I think you'll see in another shot here. Um, yeah, again, it's just running the bull nose all the way down through. You can see I just used the uh, cheap uh, Porter Cable uh, uh, compressor and nail gun that works great. Um, you can also see here uh, some of the trim that you'll see um, that gets covered on the front here later. Um, i starting to paint it there, it looks like. A um, little progress here. So this jumps ahead a little bit, but, um, so you can see all of the bull nose is on, um, the, the stage and then the bull nose is also on the uh, step and you, you, there will be a, there'll be a, um, a little, uh, 
pocket in here, obviously, uh, between the bullnose and the uh, uh, subfloor, both here and here. And you'll see later on that I actually filled mine in with just carpet um, when they came. And I had them come and, come and lay the carpet. Um, I just had them put that in, fill that in. Um, then you also notice that the trim is on. And so um, this jumped ahead a little bit. But so you, what you want to do is make sure you get this trim back here on before you put this bullnose on. And then you want to cut the bullnose so it goes up nice and flush um, with the trim. Uh, so don't put the bullnose on the step until after you've got the trim along this back part. And you'll notice again, I'm not a I'm not a big woodworker here, so I'm uh, I I didn't feel comfortable trying to cut this all out of one piece. So it's hard to see here, but those are there's actually a seam there, and these are two different pieces. Uh, so I was able to just cut this one at its own angle, and then just um, and then a separate one for down here that ran underneath the step. Um, with the you know wood filler sanding uh, black paint it uh, <laughs> blends in pretty good and you don't really notice it if you don't um, if you uh, don't pay attention so yeah again uh, make sure trims on um, the stage framing first um, and then put the bullnose on the step the other thing you'll notice here is um, the, I started putting the framing together for the screen itself so this is the frame that's going to hold the screen you want this to be really straight and what I found these things are great is I got actually engineered two by fours so they're expensive uh, for sure uh, much more expensive than regular two by fours but they're straight I mean uh, you're never going to find a two by four this straight or if it is that straight it's probably going to end up twisting over time uh, these things are straight they stay straight um, so highly recommend those you can get them in really long lengths as you can see and and again really straight so um you know, this this is what I use to hold the frame, um, hold the uh, uh, screen up. Um, and you'll see later, uh, this gets filled in with uh, my LCR speakers and subs and then some uh, base traps in the back here. So, um, yeah, again, recommend I recommend these uh, uh, engineered two by fours for anything like that where you need you really want them to be straight and stay straight. Another shot of them here. Um, you can see again not attached this is not attached to the wall um, this does get this does this is attached to the floor and this is one thing I've probably made a mistake here but again it hasn't it didn't really hurt me is I actually did attach this to the stage and it is attached to the ceiling as well the ceiling of my stage is actually a is a soffit you know the wall the ceilings built down and uh, and that's also all filled with insulation so I think that helps you know there, and you'll see later i've got a lot of isolation on the floor here so i don't think anything's being transmitted through this up to the ceiling into the house um just filling in the framing here so uh, this is where I, um, you'll see later this is, there's some i think trim board gets put on here and then that's where i end up attaching the uh attaching the screen to this one i actually i think i end up taking out later i had this put in um to hold the bottom of the screen but it ends up uh um and, and that's what I, I ended up making it so it's detachable you can take uh it's just got l brackets holding it on and that is so that um it was <laughs> getting the speakers and the my subs in and out um here were was going to be impossible trying to lift them up over this my subs ended up being very big and very heavy so um i actually took this off unscrewed this and then just put brackets on there so it's real easy to take on and off to if i ever need to move the uh subs or speakers in there out um, don't think anything else new here other than just the framing again complete a little more of the framing for the screen okay now we start um, building the base traps in the corners um, so you notice first thing I did is I put another layer of the three-quarter inch rubber down um, same exact stuff that's on the uh, on the stage and this is a good shot I guess you can see of the um, of the stage not touching the wall and then this one is attached to the wall but not attached to here so this is um, uh, this this board here is not attached uh, to this, so it's attached to the wall, but it doesn't touch. So uh, base traps, um, yeah. What I did, um, so I already had this board here. I ripped a two by four down um, and uh, screw that into the wall. And uh, actually, I should have mentioned before is the I have OSB behind this wall as well, so this is all OSB and drywall as well. Um, so you, I made it it made it really easy just to screw this in wherever I needed to without having to find a stud. Um, so I recommend it's just kind of nice having OSB in, behind all the walls because you can just put things wherever you want and not have to try and find a stud. So this is uh, Roxel, uh, Rockwool. I think they might. I think they. 
that safe and sound is what it is. Um, I, it's, uh, I think they might've changed their name. It may not be a rock cell anymore, but, um, essentially I just took this, cut it into triangles and then started stacking it. Um, and you'll see in a second here, I think. Yeah, just another shot of that. Again, rubber down. Uh, there's the two by four I was talking about that I ripped down and screwed on there to make a nice, um, uh, I, later on you'll see I actually attached speaker fabric between here and here to cover up the rock sole because you don't want that fiberglass ex left exposed. Yeah, so what I did, um, because of all the weight, you can't just stack the rock sole up all the way from the floor to the ceiling without it actually drooping and sagging. So what I did is I just made these little tiny simple um, shelves and it's it, it's nothing but a little, uh, I think it's poplar I put down here um, with some finished screws holding it in. And then I just stapled uh, these cardboard triangles to it. Um, and I think I did these like every foot, um, I believe is what I did here. And what that does is that just gives it support to hold um, so that all the weight of the rock so isn't like squishing all the other ones down on the lower part. And it's it's held up great. They're not they're not sagging or slouching at all. So there's a good shot of what it what it looks like as you're starting to stack them up. And then uh, um, you can't you know I cut these little cardboard triangles so they're short. Um, they're not sticking all the way out, so you can't even see them. Everything gets painted black um, too. You'll notice I painted all the the two by four. Everything here is black um, just so that you don't get any light reflection back. And so there's the two um, base traps uh, loaded floor to ceiling. Um, again, you notice, you know, it uh, stays stacked pretty well. Um, everything painted black. And you'll see later these get covered with speaker fabric so that you don't have the uh, um, fiberglass exposed. And then there again, there's the rubber mat underneath. Um, and then this, this gets filled in with the rubber mat later as well. Just another shot of the same thing. Um, everything trim in place over here. You can see I started, I was actually working on my, uh, chair rail as well. All right. So here's a shot. This may be the only shot I had, unfortunately, of the, a good shot, at least of the speaker fabric. So you can see, I just took, um, I just went to join fabrics and picked up their cheap, um, uh, speaker fabric and just stapled it to that two by four that I told you I mounted on the side there and then stapled it to the uh, that engineered two by four on this side and that worked great just just to cover them up so that your fiberglass isn't exposed um here's uh, you can see here my I'm building my columns and then I also built some cabinets in the back here and I'm going to do a, another video on that stuff uh, later so now um to put we did some sound I did some sound treatment on the back of the theater wall and um I did a lot of research into this and it's everything I read seemed to indicate that you wanted to have the back of the theater, you know, as dead as possible. Um, and without doing huge amounts of sound isolation, um, you know, behind that wall, um, I decided to buy these. So the, again, a link in a uh, link in the description to the blog that has the link to all this stuff, but these are just, um, I think these are two inch, um, foam right there. Uh, 12 by 12 uh, foam panels. So these actually end up getting um, glued um, with 3M spray adhesive. And uh, one of the things I recommend, um, again, I think I had the link to the 3M in there, but um, the, the stuff for me, at least, I don't know if I wasn't doing it right or if it was the paint on the wall or what it was, but I followed the instructions of spraying it on and then spraying it on the wall and then letting it sit um, air a little bit and then attaching it. But um I found later on that they were just falling off. Um, you know, I would look behind my screen and I would see a lot of them laying on the floor. So what I ended up doing uh, on all of these is I put like four finish nails um, in each one. And again, because I had the OSB behind there, um, I didn't have to worry about hitting a stud or anything. And I just nailed uh, each of these, uh, put little finish nails through each of these, uh, four of them, I think it was, four in each, one in each corner. And, uh, and then they haven't fallen off since. So um, I'd recommend if you are going to do this uh, to, to do the same thing, do a um, put something else on there other than just the 3M adhesive. Um, and I, I don't know, again, it could have just been my wall or I might have been waiting long enough or what, but um, it's uh, the, I, mine started falling off, so I put those nails in there. So then the other thing you'll see here is the carpet. The carpet's actually black, really black. Um, for some reason, the pictures make it look, 
purplish, but um, it might be, the, it's probably just the lighting. It's not purple, it's black. Um, but then what you'll notice is, so I had that carpet put in and I had them, you can see these sections here are filled in with carpet. So the step um, there is filled in with carpet and then these little openings here got filled in too. So now, um, you know, now the, the stage uh, look appearance wise actually is, is pretty, pretty complete. And here you can get a better shot of, you can see what I was saying, where I actually ran two different boards, one up the top and one on the bottom. So you, you can see it a little bit, but if you're not really looking for it, you don't really notice it. Um, you know, I, I probably could, no, no, I wouldn't want to run more trim around there, but um, it, I probably could have done a better job. Um, and I, or I could have brought, had somebody come in, or I could have tried it myself, but get one large trim board and just notch it for this, have it come around here. But you have an angle there an angle there, and an angle there that you've got to get all exactly right um, or you ruin the board. So um, I'm just not that precise of a carpenter. Again, I just staggered the uh, foam um, just for looks, even though you can't really see it all that much. Um, I just like knowing that it looks nice behind the screen. Uh, another shot of that is my stage overall. Um, again, hundred. You know, you'll see later the hundred forty inch screen. Um, this is my concrete countertop that I poured. Um, I might do a video on that too. Um, it was pretty easy to do, and um, again, my home theater I've built a, almost all of it myself. So I what I didn't. The only thing I haven't done is the carpet in the drywall. Um, my I did some of the drywall, but my wife's uncle actually owns a drywall company, so. Why do that yourself? <laughs> and plus, that's I, I feel like that's an art. Uh, and uh, um, there's people that are really good at that, and I am not. So um, I would recommend subbing out the drywall unless you really know what you're doing. And then, uh, then of course, the carpet. Uh, the carpet. I the carpet. I just got cheap carpet, honestly, from Home Depot. I looked at some of the really nice carpet from carpet stores, and it's just crazy money for it. Um, and I, you know, in the end, it's like you're walking on it. It's black carpet. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's not the greatest stuff in the world, but it, uh, it works great in my home theater and, uh, and I really like it. So it's more black than it looks there. Um, it, it looks kind of purplish there, but you can see there's the stage lights. This speaker wire here actually ended up not getting used. Um, when I first had started wiring my theater, I was wiring it with 14 wire. Um, and then, so actually you can see there's pipes right here that run into my, uh, media, uh, my, I have like a closet and behind here that um, I'll do another video on because this is kind of cool. I have a, uh, the rack is right here in this opening and there's a linear actuator that actually pulls the whole rack back and opens up the room. So the rack itself becomes the door. Um, so I will do a video on that as well. But I ended up using uh, 12, uh, just monoprice 12-2 uh, wire to run to the LCR speakers. Um, so that 14 wire ended up not getting used. You, I mean, it might even see in a later video, I think I end up cutting it off and, and those get filled in, those uh, foams get filled in. Just another shot with the uh, LED lights on. So here you can see, um, here's my LCR speakers. These are awesome speakers from DIY Sound Group. They're Titan 615s. Um, great, great speakers. Um, and you can see uh, what I did here is there's the rest of the uh, rubber down um, that I told you, the rest of the three quarter inch rubber that I put down on the stage. But then you, I, what I also did for these is um, I had rubber left over, so I cut a bunch of little, I don't know, roughly four by four probably squares of the rubber out. And then each speaker is sitting on a four by four square. Um, and then there's actually some cardboard underneath it as well. Uh, and so uh, that so now you're talking, you got those four by those those uh, three quarter inch pads there sitting on this uh Three quarter inch pad that's sitting on the stage that's sitting on a uh, three quarter inch pad um, and so you can see the isolation that's there to prevent um, any of that sound from being transmitted um, from the speakers down into the floor and again as i said in the opening it's like it's it really really effective uh, i can uh, be i can have this theater playing really loud and and with the door closed here it's like nobody and the house even knows it. So this is the shared wall with the house over here on this right on the right hand side, um, and that's the one that I have the uh, OSB that's cocked in, in the extra drywall. So here's the screen. This is kind of the finished product. Um, 
just my 140 inch screen uh the lights on again you can't see it. i don't have this finished yet this is this is going to be curtains um over on the sides here and there's going to be actually a automated curtain that will open and close to cover um if you're playing 16 by 9 content rather than the 235 uh, so that it covers the um, white sides of the, the I, i'm just going to try making my own automated uh, panel so there will be a video on that as well so again, subscribe if you want to see some of this stuff. Um, I'm trying to do all this stuff DIY, uh, and then I'm trying to document what I'm doing and uh, and create these videos to help other people do it too. Uh, so here, these are subs. Uh, these are uh, DIY subs as well. These were built completely from scratch um, at an MDF. Um, may do a video on that. Um, if Anybody wants any, um, has any recommendations for what they would like to see in videos for my home theater or any of this home automation stuff that you see on my channel, uh, you know, please put it in the description below and I'll do my best to try and do videos on any of this. But I'm not sure if anybody wants to see videos on building these subs, but if they do, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to get one out. These were custom designed and built. Um, had some help with some people on avsforum.com, which is a really, really good cool um home theater site if you're in if you're building your home theater i highly recommend going over there um a bunch of great people um that are willing to help uh, so these are dayton audio these are 18 inch subs um dayton audio i think they're tuned i think they're tuned for around 17 hertz a piece um and so uh these are 18 inch ultimax uh drivers that are in there and so you can see there's a lot of power and bass here and um and it, you know, again, I can play this theater really loud, um, and nobody in the nobody in the uh, rest of the house even realizes it. So here's the here here's the um, subs in with the LCR speakers, and actually, you can even see I have the um, at this point I had the uh, um, this is a linear uh, or this is a a motor here, um, and these are uh, curtain rods. So uh, I'm gonna try and build my own. Uh, like I said, masking system with this. And so um, we'll have a video on that uh, later on. But here's uh, just some, you can see you put popular trim on, on the top here in the bottom. And this attached to that um, engineered 2x4 that you saw running across. Uh, these are the brackets to hold the, uh, the screen up. And then uh, LED lighting. So I have LED lighting um, on the bottom of this piece of trim. And then later on, I also put LED lighting on here and that's to light up the back of the screen. Uh, so you can actually see the speakers and stuff in there if the, um, if the backstage lighting is on. So I did the same thing with these subs four by four, um, panels, um, to go underneath, uh, each sub, sorry, four by four rubber, um, feet. You, I guess you could say the leftover from the, um, the other mat, just cut the four by fours out about four under each sub. So like all these speakers are sitting on um, on those feet that are sitting on the rubber mat that are sitting on the stage that's not hooked to anything. Um, and it, it's, it's wor it worked out really great. Um, uh, second floor, you know, second floor stage again, garage is underneath here, shared wall over here with the house and, and so far so good. No complaints from anybody else in the family when I'm playing this. Um, and as you can see, there's lots of, uh, lots of firepower here. So um, I can be playing this at very pretty high reference levels and uh, and nobody in the house um, complains. So I think that's a, a good sign that uh, it's isolated pretty well. So I think that's it. Um, that's that's the finished thing there. Um, if you have any questions on anything that I put in here, um, please leave them in the comments and I will uh, do my best to get back to you on them. And again, if anybody has any suggestions on what they want to see, um, you know, anything to do with my home theater or any of the other stuff you've seen, um, uh, you know, re again, renewable energy, home automation, home networking, that kind of stuff, leave in the comments below and I will do my best to uh, do a video on that. So again, if you found this helpful, uh, please give the thumbs up and uh, please subscribe and uh, um, leave me a comment if you uh, have questions and if you have suggestions on what to do next. Uh, until then, till the next video, thanks.